Hello everyone, it's Farkad here, and this is part 3 of my beginner's guide. In this one, I'm going to focus on raiding villages, the enemy villages, as well as some cave exploration. I'm going to show you how to find the modern axe, which is definitely the best melee weapon in the game. Cross this thing here. Try not to get wet at night time. If you get wet at night time, it's going to make you cold. And being cold is more annoying than anything. It reduces your energy quite fast as well. So run up here, and there's a red man there, if you come from this way for the first time. If you go up to him, the most common place to see him is on the yacht, and he'll run away and disappear. There's quite a few places you'll find him. If we go up here, there's this hut here. This is red paint. Now, it's a little bit complicated as to what it does, but it's very good. If you get wet, if you go underwater, water, it washes it off. If it rains, it washes it off. If I save an exit, it's going to respawn too. Also, this is the main village of theirs, and there's a lot of cloth here. Now, none of this respawns. It used to, but it doesn't anymore. These suitcases here, these just have outfits in them. They're usually random. It's up to you if you want to grab them. Like I said, you can only carry five. But it doesn't tell you what outfit you're wearing, but you can see what you've got there. So you come up here and get as much cloth as you can. Now, what red paint does is that it has a high chance of making the cannibals, the human enemies, to not attack you or even to pray to you. It's got something to do with that red man over there. Just put it that way. So there's a cannibal right there. Now, it doesn't work all the time. Some of them will just straight up attack you. Others will kind of back away. Now, see he's praying. Now, this is a good opportunity to show you the hostility range. If you go this close to enemies, this is where you trigger their hostility. This is where they go, I'm going to kill you. Move closely at little increments, and I'll show you the distance. Okay, that's the distance there. He's pissed off at me now. He will most likely attack me. That triggers them. It's like a trigger thing. And there's heaps of cloth here, but like I said, it doesn't respawn. And you can raid everything in here. Now, some things in here do respawn. This is what I like about that spot. It's so close to here, and this is good for raiding. There's a lot of suitcases, effigies, and cloth. There's a lot of soda here too, like a lot. So there's two boxes here. It flies in the air when you destroy the box, which is kind of annoying. So I want to keep my distance from them. I don't really want to trigger them because I want to be able to raid this and get out of here. Don't want to get involved in combat if you can avoid it. Now here, there's four sticks of dynamite. Now this respawns every time you save an exit. Keep that in mind. So I'm already maxed out on cans of soda. Got 10. See, you really don't need water when you've got this much soda nearby. So I'm going to keep my distance. Now these are circuit boards. These are used to make bombs. Dynamite's better though. Well, got to keep my distance. These hold flares or modern arrows. These ones are flares in here though. And just check all the huts. Don't spend too long here, though. Grab the rope. As you see, there's another two boxes of soda. And in the middle here, there's another box. They've actually run through it and exploded it. This all respawns. The soda respawns when you save an exit. Now, one more key point of interest is that there's a cave here. And this is the cave you spawn at when you die. They'll drag you here. Now, if you die to sharks and maybe drowning, there's a good chance that it will kill you permanently. If you die or get knocked unconscious, technically it's getting knocked unconscious, get brought back here and then you die within the next, I think, day or two, you die permanently. So you really don't want to die again. They'll just keep dragging you back here otherwise. And when you die, you still get to carry your stuff. You just start with really low stats. You just have to heal up and that, but there's heaps of resources in here. There's snacks and sodas and stuff in here. Now in multiplayer, it's different. When you die, you get knocked unconscious and you go on the ground, you need to be revived. If you don't get revived, you'll have to start again and you'll lose all your stats. So if you had 99 strength and 99 athleticism and you die, you're going to lose all that. So you want to get revived. So if you're playing multiplayer but by yourself, try not to die. Otherwise, you're going to lose all that stuff. And if you come up here, there's no enemies in this section of the cave. There's just resources. There's a spray can there and suitcases. Now, I use F as my lighter key because it's right next to the movement keys. Usually it's L. I change that every time I reinstall the game. It's just my personal preference. If you want a better light source, there's a number of weapons like the club, axes, upgraded stick. You attach a cloth to it like that. And then you hold down your lighter. It lights it. Now every time you swing it, it reduces its flame length and over time it will go out. If you want the longest burning one, it's upgraded stick. But if I swing it, say, I think it's seven or eight times, it's already gone out. You can make molotovs. That's another thing. These are not very good, in my opinion. I never use them because on normal mode, they're very good. Though on hard and hard survival, enemies take 
a lot less damage from fire to a point where it's just used to stun them. But that can provide you light. This won't ever explode in your hand. And it's the same with dynamite. You can light that, but it's not a very good light source. But this won't ever go out either. And it won't explode in your hand. It actually says physically on it that it's got a five minute fuse, though it doesn't ever explode. When you throw it, it does explode. If you press G, it drops it right there, which is good for um, if you want to get trees. You use explosives to get trees. That's a very good way to get trees. It's the cave map and the world map as well. So when you're underground, it's different to when you're above ground. All searches the same. It's M to open that one. Or if you want to, you can get it out in the inventory. It's there. All oh, the passenger list too. This is more of a story thing and an achievement thing, but it marks them off every time you go near a passenger. Some don't count as passengers. It's usually bodies that are completely mangled and you couldn't identify them. And that was the compass there. Now it's a left-handed item, meaning you can use it while you've got another weapon. I actually never use the compass and map. I just tend to get by without them. If you find it easy, you do it for sure. But what you can do is you can use the map and the compass at the same time. So it can be a bit easier to navigate. Once you've revealed more of the map, it does become a bit easier. And there's story items like this. Where if you pick up an item, it will make a woo woo noise. That doesn't go in your inventory here. Where it goes is into your survival guide. So if we go to the back here, it gets stored in notes. So you have to scroll through them. Each page has a designated spot. Missed, the, missed that one. Oh, it didn't go in there. It's supposed to. Now with uh, the sp spray can, this doesn't last very long, but it's good for setting enemies on fire. Something to note is when you set an enemy on fire, if you keep applying fire to them, it doesn't do any more damage and it doesn't restart their burn time. So for instance, you could be sh shooting them like this nonstop for about three seconds, maybe five seconds. You only need to apply it once. So like if that sets them on fire, that's all you need to do. Then you switch to another weapon. Don't keep using, don't keep using fire on them. It's a waste. So while we're in here, I'm going to go down here and get the modern axe. Now, this cave is a little bit tricky, but it's not at the same time. You have to deal with three enemies along the way. So I recommend you get down here. You can climb the rope. You press E. If you hold down shift, you can get up much quicker and you can slide down it too. But I got to the top, automatically drags me up. Oh, don't underestimate fall damage. Uh, fall damage is quite deadly. Now when you're playing these games, you can jump off real high heights and sometimes you barely take any damage and sometimes you'll fall down like a meter and you go, oh, half health, it's gone. Yeah, just don't underestimate it. So I need food if I eat that. Drops my thirst a little bit because it's dried, but increases my hunger completely up. It doesn't matter what your thirst is at or your hunger too. It just depends on your energy. So I don't really need to drink, but I'm going to drink anyway. Now this is probably the best weapon I've got now. So I'm going to touch a cloth to it. I'm going to light it because there's one enemy down here. Now, personally, I find the skinny enemies, the skinny cannibals, the hardest to deal with because they move a lot faster. Now, this is a grey one, so they're a little bit stronger than the ones that you've seen up the top. They're the dirty ones. Now, I've got red paint on, so he's probably not going to attack me. He's going to pray. See, if he's praying, what I can do is quickly run up. Power attack. There we go. Oh, he launched him into the air. Yep, there we go. And he's dead. And you can burn the bodies too. And what this does is after about 20 seconds or 30 seconds, I'll turn into six bones and one skull. The skull will despawn if you move away from it. But up here, I might get this out because this is a better weapon for searching caves with. There's three candy bars. This all respawns too when you save and exit. And there's rope down in here. When you're going in the caves, there's always a lot of rope. So make sure you've got something that you can use for it. So if you've got the skins, you can use it to make stuff. There's only one in here. There used to be a magazine in here, but it's being removed. See, they're turning the bones. Don't need the skull. What I could do with the bones is make a upgraded spear, which is a fairly decent melee weapon, though I don't recommend that you throw it. Three bones, two cloth, and a weak spear. So try not to chuck that. What you can do is attach this to it. And when you throw it, it explodes. Don't worry, it won't explode in your hand. This has the longest range of every weapon in the game though you can't block with it. Good for keeping your distance. It's even got a longer range than the weak spear, but just. The weak spear, you just have to remake it. You'll get another one. Now I've got four ropes. As mentioned, I should make some things with it. So what can I make? So I'm probably going to make nothing because I don't have anything, except for a water pouch. Now this, you can get water from your water collector and use it on the go, which I highly recommend you do. Don't drink out of the water collector, fill it up and then drink from that because it uses less water. And what you can do is once you get a pot, you can place the pot on a campfire, boil the water, and then transfer it to the water skin. 
that once you get water collectors and enough water, you're sweet. It's just sometimes it takes a long time to uh, rain. But what I can do is I can make a pair of boots that are pretty much completely useless, which is snowshoes. I've never used these. They increase the movement speed in snow, but the rabbit fur boots will give you warmth. Generally you want to be more warmer in the snow. Also, sand decreases the speed you walk at, the same as snow. But snowshoes work in the snow, but they won't work on sand. Does that make sense? What you can do with the rest of the bones is you can actually make uh, bone arrows, which I don't recommend because there's a thing in the game called modern arrows, which respawn every time you save an exit. And there's a place called the film crew camp and you just get unlimited arrows there. So you can make bone armor, which is quite good. If you're playing on, uh, is it peaceful mode? Your chances of getting bones are very rare because you have to get them from effigies when you get the limbs and you put them on a fire and wait for them to burn and they'll turn into bones. This way here, do not go this way. This is bad. There is... Uh, mutant down there and there's not much good stuff down there so it's not even worth it if you're a bit more beefed up late game you can go down there but if we go down here there's going to be some cannibals down here see i still got red paint on so they might be obedient yeah they're going to be obedient in normal mode when you open your inventory it pauses the game on multiplayer hard and hard survival it does not pause the game so i'm going to do that thing again run in power attack I didn't even set him on fire He's much weaker. Okay, same thing again. And attack him. Oh, they do that too. You can right click to block. Oh, they're pretty weak. Now you can pick up the bodies and add them to a pile. Press G and I can burn them like this. But oh, I'm not going to stuff around with that. Don't really need it. Now these cases here, these actually have cloth in them. So make sure you get these. All these respawn. Pretty much every item in caves respawns. Except for some of the story items and enemies. Enemies don't respawn. So make sure you get all these cloth cases. Now the main reason you come down here. Don't have to go that way though. Is this little part here. See this? This little tucked away cave part. This is a long rope down. You don't want to fall off this. Enemies in the game don't really take fall damage. So... If you skip those enemies and just run straight down here, they'll probably fall down here and they'll be waiting for you at the bottom, which might be a bit unpleasant. Come down here. There's no more enemies you have to deal with in this part of the cave. And there's an outfit here. Medication. Modern arrows here. Heaps of dynamite. This dynamite doesn't respawn, but everything else here respawns, including this here. This is a modern axe. This is actually the best weapon in the game, in my opinion. It's the best axe in the game, too. So I'll put that at number one, and I'll get the rest of the stuff that's in here. And there's more red paint and a story item here too. Now I wonder if this will store in the survival guide this time. There we go. See, stores here. So wherever it makes that noise, it's going to be in the back here, survival guide. It's just story items, they don't do anything. Though there are some blueprints for other structures you can get, though that's more complicated. It includes a log track, glider, church, totem, coffin... So there's heaps of arrows in here. I think there's 30 all up, which is actually pretty good. So now I've got arrows for my bow. I don't know. I've got 15. Maybe they reduce the stacks that they come in. I'm not going to raid the rest because I've pretty much got everything. You go back up. It takes a while though. Now this is a trick I like to do when I'm exploring caves. What I do is that I wait just below the top here and I'll regain my stamina just in case there's anything above there. I'll have full stamina to deal with the fight. But I know there's nothing there because I killed it all. Now, I do say that enemies won't respawn, though there is a chance that they can respawn, but it's a bug. How to get back out of here? You can go this way and turn left and you'll get to the Lakeside Cannibal Village. That's the easiest way to get in here. Though from the Fertile Lands, it's easy to come through here. Oh, it's much shorter. So you just go up here. Remember that skull hanging there? Don't go down there. So we're going to go left. You have to crouch underneath these. I used to think these were teeth. They're actually fingers. Someone had their fingers in some pies, eh? These are bats. You can kill them. Oh, you can pick your arrows back up if you can find them. Sometimes they disappear. Sometimes they don't. You can't get any meat from them. They're usually used to scare you. Usually I don't use cloth and caves because I can see relatively well and I know where I'm going, but you probably should. Now, heading down here. Now, there's that cave part that goes down there. You don't want to go down there. There's nothing really down there. So you want to go back this way. Caves are very disorientating. You're going to get lost a lot. If you're wanting to reset your body clock, I recommend you do cave searching during the night because well, that doesn't really matter. You don't really want to be doing it during the day like I've actually been doing it. So go back up. It's probably going to be nighttime, actually. 
Yep. It's nighttime. So if I look up and try and find the moon, I can't see it. So it's either close to daytime or it's just gone nighttime. It's too hard to tell. What I can do, I've only got 11 sticks. I need a couple more. There's some sticks in here. Okay, it's just gone daytime. So this is when your strength counter resets. You can only gain two strength per day. Every time you swing a weapon, it raises your strength. You can only gain two strength per day, unless you save and exit, but that's getting complicated. So let's restart. I can gain another two strength. There we go. It's daytime. So that was actually very good timing because I just came out of here. So what I can do is head back down to my base. I can collect the cloth that I missed out on because I'll probably need it. I'm getting low on energy, so I might eat a meat and drink a soda. Now, it will only trigger rain when you're out of the cave. So it won't rain while you're in there. And also, you need to be rather close to your water collectors for them to actually fill up. Because I'm quite far away, I don't think they'll refill. There's another story item, and it will go in the back of your book. So I'm in a conundrum here. I've got the red paint. If I land in the water, it's going to wash it off. So you can try and... So I managed to get over there without getting wet. And then back to my base here. And I've got a lot more resources too. Anyway, that's enough for this one. In the next one, I'm probably going to focus a bit more on exploring the surrounding area and where you can find some other things. Anyway, if you like this video, make sure you like and subscribe. Cheers. <laughs>